Hey everyone, today we're gonna to talk about effects. I'm gonna go over a bunch of the different effects that are in the Digitact, show you how to access them, show you how you can manipulate them to get different sounds. So the effects that I'm gonna cover here are delay, reverb, compression, bit rate reduction, and sample rate reduction. Let's start with delay and reverb. So as I've said earlier, if you go to the AMP page, you can see that it has delay and reverb. But this isn't actually the delay and reverb settings. It's where you tell how much of a signal you want to send to the delay into the reverb. So it's a subtle but important difference. So right now I've got a pattern that I've used before. Let's go and add some effects to some of the tracks. Right now, I'm going to mute all the tracks but this little bass line. Because it's kind of boring. So you're going to want to select the track you're on. And let's send some delay and reverb it. That's the delay. That's reverb. Let's start with delay for right now. To access the settings of delay, you'll have to press function and the filter button. You can see delays written here in orange. And here we are. So let's go through what each of these parameters means. When you have a delay, basically you're having a repeating note of the note you just played going on and on at a set interval for as long as you want. And so what we have here on the bottom, we have a filter that can control and color that sound. You can use data knobs E and F to control that filter. If I only let the lower frequencies come through, listen to what it sounds like. You can almost barely hear it. Wide open, it would sound like this. And then if I raise the high pass filter, you can hear it sounds sort of tinny up at the top. Let us, let's, have, let's set it somewhere in the middle for right now. Data entry knob G tells how much of this delay signal you want to send to the reverb. The volume controls the volume of the reverb. The feedback will tell you how long it goes on for. Be careful not to do it too much because it can get out of control really quickly. Over here we have time, which controls the spacing between the hits. And then right here we have ping pong, which will make it go into the left and right stereo field. And then right here, the stereo width will control how far it goes into that stereo field. So that's how the delay works. Let's head over to reverb. Again, we have a filter where we can shape the reverb. We have a control that can tell us whether or not we send it after the compression or before the compression. This is the pre-delay and the decay time. And then the feedback shelving gain allows you to control it even more. Wondering why I couldn't hear it. Here, I'm going to turn down the delay for a second so we can really hear it. So 
you can hear it, it's much airier like that. So this would this would fit well for like some shimmery reverbs. You can almost hear with the pre-delay set up from the moment you hit it, there's just this little bit of delay before that reverb really kicks in. Now, the thing to remember too is that these delay and reverb settings are global. So that's where back at the amp menu, this tells how much of a signal to send to those settings. But as you're dialing in a particular sound, you're gonna to have to be mindful that this is gonna affect the reverb on all of your tracks. Let's go to compression for a second. So if you press function LFO, you can have your compressor. There's three pages here, compressor, internal mixer, and external mixer. We're just gonna go to the first page, which is compressor. Now, compression is one of those things that's kind of hard to wrap your brain around at first, but as you start to understand what it's used for and the different types of uses, it becomes a lot clearer. So basically compression is a way to condense the dynamics in a track. This is used a lot as a utility in radio and things like that, where if you have a person who's speaking on like a podcast or on TV or something like that, if they speak, if their voice actually gets quieter, you want to kind of raise that level and take out any peaks so that it's just a steady volume. When this was first being explained to me, I'll never forget it. They showed a movie where someone was whispering and you could hear them talking at the same volume as in another cutscene where the person was yelling. And that's due to compression. When you see a singer kind of pull the microphone away as they're belting out a really high note, but it's just manually dynamics control. And that's what compression does. Now in a lot of modern music, it's used almost as an effect because it does change the sound. So we're gonna set it in the middle somewhere and I'm gonna turn the threshold all the way up. And as I turn this threshold down, notice the little bar on the right hand side of the screen. That's showing you how much gain reduction is happening. I turn it way up, it's compressing it a lot. As the sound passes by the threshold, it's lowered by the ratio amount. So you can see how the curve or the knee lowers down at that dotted line. So anything that goes past the threshold, rather than just being a linear straight line up, will be kind of squashed just a little bit. And if you set it all the way, it almost sets it like a hard limiter so that anything above that threshold isn't gonna go up anymore.
attack and release will control how fast the compressor takes effect. For things like drums, you might want it a little bit harder of an attack. For just sort of master mix compression and gelling everything together, you might want it to set the attack and release time to be a little bit longer. And in the bottom two, you have side chain compression where you can choose a track that you want to be the source of side chain compression and then also where you might and then how you want the filter to impact it so frequently kick drums are used as a source of side chain compression so i'm going to set it from track one and we'll set it to a pretty low filter Actually, I'm going to set my, I'm going to change my, um, this to a steady beat because it creates this pulsing sound. Now you can see that every time the kick drum kicks in, it's it's making the compression hit harder. I mean, obviously I'm overdoing it right now, but. something you might want to play around with and then finally because you're squashing everything you might want to add some makeup gain now a lot of modern pop songs and a lot of modern uh and a lot of modern EDM has some really intense compression, so definitely don't be afraid to get in there and play around with some of these. And just to give you an A-B example, so that's with some pretty serious compression going on. This is probably much more than I would typically do. It's a little bit much for my taste, but you can hear what it sounds like. Now without the compression. Turn it up just so you can hear the difference. So there you go. Those are delay, reverb, and compression. Let's just cover bit rate reduction. It's not technically an effect, but it does change the sound. It kind of creates a lo-fi quality that's on the source page. So I'm going to mute everything but my little bass sound again. Now the last one is sample rate reduction. That's new with the 1.5 operating system upgrade. And so if we go to filter, it's on the second page of the filter, right in the upper right hand corner. Okay. 
kind of creates this nice growl. So there you go. That's how you change the effects on the Digitac. I should note too that in the back you have the input left and right. So if you're using your the Digitac as a hub for other gear, you can actually run other gear through these two entries and can give them the same effects from the Digitac. If you go to external mixer, that's where you can control how much you send the delay and the reverb from these two inputs. So I hope you got something out of this video. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.